Join me today as we review a simple first-time setup with the 5G Store Dual Outlet Remote Power IP Switch, otherwise known as the UIS 622B. If you're not already familiar with this device and how it works, check out our earlier video where we compare it to the single outlet switch. First, leave the power to your devices as they are. In our case, a modem and router. Connect an Ethernet cable into the switch and into a LAN port on your router. Plug the switch into power next. As your switch boots up, the LED will flash on in and off. Give it a few moments and the lights will stop. If your internet connection is operating correctly, the internet LED will illuminate green. Adding the switch to the cloud for UIS network will be the simplest method of setup. This is done at the website or through the mobile application called Easy Device. We're going to show you the process via the website. If you do not have an account set up, you will need to complete that first. Once you enter your email and create a password, you will receive an email to verify your account, which completes the setup. If you're using the app, log in and look for Add at the top right. Through the website, click on the button at the top right with the three dots. Select the outlet with a plus sign. The cloud network begins searching and if needed, you can click the arrow button to have it refresh the search and start again. If you're connected to the same network as the switch when you do this, it should automatically find the device. If not, you may add it manually by the serial number. You will be prompted to disconnect the Ethernet LAN cable for a second and plug it back in. This ensures the switch is ready for add mode. Continue through the steps, using the information labeled on the bottom of the switch. Click Done when the steps show completion. At this time, the cloud link illuminates. To proceed with configuration or view the switch details, click on the switch icon. In the device menu, the M signifies the switch is currently in manual mode. If you're someone that needs to control power to a local network connection at random times, such as an Ethernet switch or Wi-Fi access point, this may be for you. You can also verify the outlet mode by noting the status of the UIS button. Watch as we click the M button on the cloud. The UIS turns on blue, and you can see the icon changes from M to A representing auto reset mode. For some users, the default configuration may be sufficient. Let's take a look over the menu and see how we can configure this for a modem and router. First is network. Here we can adjust the device name and make it something more identifiable. You can also disable DHCP and enter a manual address, submit mask, and gateway. Auto DNS mode is disabled by default and filled in with these servers. You may enter custom server addresses or simply enable this so it can grab the DNS from your network. Lastly, the HTTP port can be changed from the default port 80. Most users should keep this at the default. Click Save when you're done and wait for the circle at the top right here to stop spinning. Website is next. This is where you can edit the default IP addresses which the switch is using to monitor internet connectivity. Note the column on the left that reads both or none. This can be set to an individual outlet if you only need one outlet to reset based on a lost connection. Note that you cannot set a single outlet and both simultaneously, as you can see here. Just below each website you'll see UDP. This is the protocol in which the switch uses to check the connection. Typically, UDP will work for all users. If you prefer using alternate websites, you may adjust accordingly. After the fourth default address, your network's gateway address should be listed and set to none. While none means this site will not be used, it's available for users who need to monitor their router's network connection rather than their internet connection or in addition to. Once more, click save at the top when you're done. Settings. This is the most important to users as it is what controls the timing intervals and what's needed to trigger a reset. First, note the top where it says outlet number one and outlet number two. If we toggle over to number two, you'll see the settings match with the exception of the name and power on delay. Go back to Outlet 1 and change the name if you desire. Next is the Reset Only setting. Because we are controlling our internet connection via our modem and router, we want to enable this setting. With Reset Only disabled, you have the ability to power the outlet on or off. Enabling this simply takes away the risk of us accidentally powering our internet connection off therefore dropping our link to the switch. Power on delay is important here as we want to make sure our modem boots down completely before powering it back on. This may differ in your case, but we're entering 20 seconds. Under timeout settings, the first three will stay at default, 
though you might increase these if you're on a limited data plan. Ping delay is configured in minutes and we want to enter an approximate time in which it will take our modem and router to reboot and establish an internet connection. Keep in mind that the power on delays you configure for both outlets. UAS reset refers to the number of times the switch will continue to reset if after the first attempt, the connection has not been established. If this is at a remote location, you might consider increasing this value. Lastly, we have the force UAS reset option. This helps if the switch loses power. When it boots up, it will follow the same power on delays to the outlets to ensure your equipment boots up properly. Before we save, we're going to adjust the first few settings for our second outlet. The name. Enable reset only, and set our power on delay for 90 seconds. This is because our modem needs time to boot up and connect before our router. Now, we'll save all our changes. If you decide to set a schedule, you may do so here. Up to 20 can be configured, don't forget to also adjust the time settings accordingly. Finally, our setup is complete, though we still have one more step. That is to simulate an outage and verify our switch is performing correctly. Let's monitor our switch now to see what happens. We're going to disconnect the Ethernet cable that connects the modem to the router. This will cause the internet to disconnect. Once at least one website fails to respond to consecutive pings, the internet light starts blinking. The cloud link will also start blinking. After all sites fail to respond, both lights will go dark and the outlets turn off. We'll now wait 20 seconds for outlet 1 to come back on. After another 70 seconds, outlet 2 powers on. At this point, we'll reconnect the Ethernet cable from our modem to our router. A few moments later and we can see the internet and cloud link lights have turned on again, indicating our internet service is working again. Since we have our ping delay set to 4 minutes, we'll continue to monitor the switch and ensure that it does not reset again.